He went from being an impoverished World War II refugee to one of the highest ranking U.S. military officials of the 90s. General John Shalikashvili retired from his illustrious career here in Western Washington before passing away in 2011. He is the subject of a new biography called The Boy on the Bridge, the story of John Shalikashvili's American success. Author Andrew Marble joins me now. How are you? Good, thank you. I didn't even know he had, was here, had retired here. Why had he? Uh, his wife was from the area, and so they retired in Steelacombe in 1997. How about that? So for quite a long time. What made you decide to write about him? <laughs> well, I was working at a think tank here in Seattle, and General Shalley was on the Board of Advisors, and I came across this article where he was asked what his greatest weakness was. And he said, I don't like confrontation. And I was just floored. Because he was, he's a general. <laughs> he was chairman of the Joint Chiefs yeah. of Staff, the highest ranking military officer. Before that, he was uh, the military head of NATO, where he had to shepherd all the chiefs of defense of all the Europe, mm -hmm. squabbling European nations. Um, and I just thought, how could that be true? And, and why would a general admit that to a journalist? Uh, so in 2010, I did the unthinkable. I quit my full-time job, gave up my health insurance. I, <laughs> I house sat, couch surfed, and even lived out of my car, oh my uh, visiting three dozen cities across three countries, interviewing well over 300 people, the general and his family. Uh, everyone who knew him at every stage in his life up to uh, when he was a VIP, uh, including Clinton and Albright, etc. And I found out he did not like confrontation. <laughs> something, and yet he was obviously extremely successful within his career in the military and then, you know, as part of an administration. Absolutely. What do you, how do you put those two things together? Well, he, he turned what could have been a big weakness into a great strength. So. He didn't avoid conflict, he just worked really hard to not let it happen in the first place. Um, and that turned him into an effective leader, a uh, very decent human being, uh, and given the state of today's politics, he's a sorely needed role model. Tell me a little bit about his childhood, how he got to the U.S. Oh, uh, well he, he was brought here by luck actually, uh, some distant relatives, some Americans that had married some of his relatives, uh, brought them over on the uh, SS America, this red, wow. white, and blue ship. There he is. Uh, yeah, this is in, in Warsaw in, in uh, 1942. Uh, he's the, the youngest one. Um, so he comes in November, has his first Thanksgiving meal on board, steps off the boat in you know, New York City. It's like the classic American success story, right? Uh, the beginnings of it, anyway. Yeah, went from there. He was um, an unusual leader, as you mentioned. He was somebody who brought a lot of people together, and he earned the trust of a lot of people as well. What, what would you describe his personality like away from work? I, I, so I interviewed lots of people who uh, knew him over the course of his life, from subordinates, uh, bosses, people who were colleagues, even some people who started out as colleagues and then became, Shally was higher than him, and he just remained the same. Um, uh, what, um, what, I would, what, what I would say about him is he treated everybody with respect, mm -hmm. even, even when he was seated across from the Iraqis during Operation Provide Comfort, uh, and he always strove to find common ground, productive common ground with, with people. I suspect that's one of the things you want, want us to take from this book. Yeah, ab absolutely. So there's a story. So uh, he was born stateless in, in Poland. Uh, his family barely survived the Warsaw Uprising. His apartment was dive bombed. The family had to be forced underground for, for, for weeks. Um, and there's this one story where uh, there was some escaping Polish partisans came out from a sewer right in front of their house. And the Shally kids had this playground that was a triangular patch of grass. Well, the partisans brought their war dead with them and buried them you know, in the, in the center, the adults in the mm -hmm. center and the kids on the, on the corner. I can certainly imagine a young kid witnessing that and saying, you know what, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to make the world a better place, right, a right. less violent place. Yeah. And it, that makes so much sense to me, and it's been my experience with people in my own life that when they've seen this kind of, when you know, when you actually know what war is, when you actually know what violence and death is, you're not cavalier about Absolutely. any of that. And he proved that um, quite a lot. So you spent nine years putting this all together, correct? Uh, more or less, I've had, Are yes. you okay? <laughs> <laughs> is everything all right with you? That's a long time to work on a book. Uh, halfway through, I, I had to take a, a job to earn some money, and then I met a beautiful woman who actually knew who General Shalley was. I told her the story of the boy on the bridge, and we got ma uh, even before we got married, she told me to quit my job and finish up. So That's a good partner. Yes. That's a very good partner. Absolutely. Um, today, there are hearings in Congress. There are 
things on Twitter, the world is sort of at a place where we're at each other's um, throats or anxious about the fact that other people are. One or the other is often the case. So it seems like this book is a bit timely in helping us not only understand somebody who tried to get along with everybody but still had a mission to achieve, um, but it might be a comfort to people. I, I hope so. And you know, it's not just state senators, even someone on a PTA board. Everybody works with other people to try to solve problems. And I think the great thing, you know, it, it, everyone needs to hear this message. So I wrote the book in, in a very engaging way. It reads like a novel. Think Lauren Hill and Brands Unbroken. Because uh, I wanted everybody to read it and everyone to incorporate some of his lessons uh, so they can get along with people and not just find common ground, but constructive common ground, which, right. is, which is harder. Can you think of an example from the book that you could tell us? about how he did that, how he accomplished that? Uh, well, the, the biggest thing was uh, after the Gulf War I, um, over a million Kurds ran into the mountains away from Iraq. They were afraid of Saddam Hussein. And about a half a million got trapped in the mountains between uh, Turkey and Iraq. And General Shali was called to lead this unprecedented international mission. There was militaries of 13 countries, well over 50 NGOs. Nobody had ever worked together. There were no rules governing how they were supposed to interact. But he came in with this low-key, quiet personality. Um, General Colin Powell said of him that he's a quiet, decent man and a very hard worker. You don't have to rant or rave or be an arrogant jerk to be successful. Shally showed that. And he showed it during Operation Provide Comfort, uh, rescuing half a million Kurds. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you very much. Well, thank Appreciate you. it. Andrew is holding a book event on November 23rd from 1 to 3 p.m. at the Mirror Store in Wallingford, so please go see him. Up next, a new edition of the classic iconic cookbook, The Joy of Cooking. We'll be right back.